Greetings in the name of Jesus this morning. Thank you for tuning in to Notes for the Morning. As you know, if you've been listening to the February devotions, the entire theme for the February devotions has been dedicated to the how to implement the believer's New Year resolve to improve their spiritual health. The good soldier of Jesus Christ must stay in the battle. He must never give up. He must never turn back. He must never bow down to the enemy. He must never compromise the doctrine of Christ. The question that must be answered by the believer is, how can I accomplish or do this? How can I carry out my New Year's resolution, my resolve as a believer to improve my spiritual health in 20? 24. Many times a believer says, I'm tired of fighting the battle. I'm so weak from the daily battle. I'm ready to go back. I'm ready to turn in my armor. However, there is no quitting for the believer. So therefore, I am asking you to consider these following three R's in relation as to how, as a believer, I can accomplish my New Year's resolve of increasing my spiritual health. Number one is to remember. This is the first key to success of implementing your New Year's resolve. Peter says, Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet as long as I am in the tab- this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. What is it that we are to remember? Number one, who God is. We must remember that God is the creator. Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We must know who God is. The God that we serve, the God that lives in us as the spirit of truth. Secondly, he is the controller. And he is the consummator of all things. He is omnipotent or all powerful. He said in Matthew 28, 18, I have all power in heaven and in earth. He is omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. And he's omniscient. He has all knowledge. I wisdom, Solomon wrote in Proverbs 8, 12, indicating and pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 1 and 24, he said that Christ is the power and wisdom of God. So the things we are to remember, first of all, is who is God? He is sovereign. He is absolute. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord shall stand. Number two, what is it second? Who the believer is in Christ. Who is the believer in Christ? He is his child. Paul wrote, for as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby ye cry, or we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself or himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So Paul concluded his remarks in verse 17, if children then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be, we suffer with him that we may also be glorified together. Now, when Paul wrote to the church of Galatia, uh, he said there in verse six, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, an adult son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Secondly, in answer to the question, who the believer is in Christ, we find out he is the dwelling place of God on the earth. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 3 and 16, Know you not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? And so the believer needs to take and remember who we are. Who is God? And who, who are we in God? 
And, for, and thirdly, he said, one in Christ. And we know that the Son of God has come, John writes, and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and that we are in him that is true. Even in his Son, Jesus Christ, that is the true God and eternal life. Number four, what God has promised to his children. Paul writes, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. But my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Paul writes again in Hebrews 13, 5, that he said, God will never leave you or forsake you. And he writes in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And so when we are finding out or answering the question, who is the believer in Christ? We are the children of God. We are the dwelling place of God on earth. We are one in Christ. And answering the question, what has God promised to his children? He has given us all of his promises. I will never leave you or forsake thee. So when the battle gets rough, when we get tired, when we get weak, and we even think about turning back and turning in our armor. We need to remember who we are. We need to remember that the grace of God, the love of God, has been extended to us and placed in our heart. That we are the children of God. That we are the very dwelling place of God. So who can be against us if God is for us? It is God that justifieth. So because of who God is and who we are in Christ, we can do all things. We will endure until the end. So believer, take heart this morning. God has placed us in Christ. Christ is in us. He is the power and wisdom of God. And so we can maintain this resolve that we've made in the month of January, that we are going to improve our spiritual health. Not in our power, but because of who God is. And God lives in us. Because we are a child of God. Because the promises are for us. And we know that God is superintending everything in our life. And it is God that causes the power to be active and the love of God in us, and all of those things come from God, not from us. So the victory and maintaining that victory in our daily lives, the source is God who lives in us. And so when you get weak, when you get tired and ready to give up, just take time to remember who you are in Christ. Well, thank you this morning for listening let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. And the first R that you placed in our heart to tell the people this morning to be encouraged. How can we be encouraged? By remembering who God is. God, you are the creator. God, you are the controller. God, you are the consummator. You are our all in all. God, you said in Proverbs 19, 21, that men have many devices, but the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. We know, God, that you're in charge of everything. And so, Lord, you know we are weak at times. Father, build us up today in the most holy faith. Keep us, O oh God, in the mind of Christ. Keep us in the way of Christ. Keep us having Christ as our goal. And knowing and admitting that we know that God will supply all of our needs. He will never fail. God has never failed. You have never failed, God. And you're not about to fail now. So as believers, God help us to take hold of the promises of God. And let us stand there knowing that we are one with you. Knowing that we're possessors of the knowledge and the power and authority of the spirit of the living God. Know that we have been given faith. Know that we are active in that faith through the love of God 
The love of God is what supplies our faith and makes it active. Father, we thank you today. We praise you today, God, for who you are and who you have made us, God. So how can we fail? We cannot fail. And so today, let us as believers just take time to remember who we are in Christ. Father, bless each person listening to my voice today. Give them what they need today, God. Uplift them, encourage them in the promises of God. Thank you, and in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen.